Star Wars 7x7 episode 1825. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the spectrum of hero stories because at its base, there's something about Erika Quell's story from Alphabet Squadron that is very similar to the story of another hero of the Rebellion, and that would be Luke Skywalker. Let's go. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode where we're going to talk about this whole hero spectrum. And here's the thing that struck me as I was listening to Alphabet Squadron. The story of Erika Quell has at its base a very similar point to the story of Luke Skywalker. If you think back to A New Hope and about how Luke wanted to join the Academy, the quote-unquote Academy, in his discussions with Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Well, the plan was for him to join the Academy, get training, jump ship someplace, and try and find a way to hook up with the Rebel Alliance. Like, that was the goal. Well, Erica Quell, it turns out, had a similar idea for her life. She had joined the Academy. She actually did what Luke Skywalker did not do, which was join the Academy, but with the intention of leaving and defecting to the Rebel Alliance. And over time, that just didn't happen. It's just one of those things where you just start going through life and you forget what you were doing for all intents and purposes. And even as she continued to participate in the Empire's activities, knowing that, you know, maybe the Emperor wasn't a great person, maybe the Empire wasn't the best, in fact, there were many sins that the Empire committed, ultimately, when she was looking for some sort of stability, some sort of guiding light, the you know, the superior officer that she reported to, Major Soren Keys, said that, you know, we're fighting for the men and women in our unit. And ultimately, that was what she committed herself to. Not the Empire, not even necessarily Shadow Wing itself, but the people in her particular squadron that she was fighting alongside. And, you know, just those people's individual lives. People that she could actually stare in the face on a day-to-day basis. And it does make you wonder, you know, could the same thing possibly have happened to Luke Skywalker? If he had joined the Academy, is it possible that he would have been, you know, sucked into life as an Imperial pilot? Would he have eventually forgotten his dream of joining the Rebel Alliance? I mean, I kind of think not. (laughs) You know, and granted, no writer at all would ever suggest that. It's just kind of an interesting what-if scenario to pursue. But... You know, would he have fallen to the dark side of the Force? Probably not, but he certainly would have been, you know, just a general, very petty person, I would say. I mean, not like, you know, someone who would be heroic in saving the galaxy. He would just be a very highly competent pilot who would probably rise up in the ranks of the Empire and, you know, might get noticed for a little twinge in the Force, but... There was a a note inside Alphabet Squadron about how, you know, maybe if Vader had paid more attention to the Starfighter Corps and, you know, helped them do their job better, that maybe they could have prevented the loss at Endor. But, you know, that's the case, then maybe he would have discovered Luke in the Starfighter Corps. It's a real interesting scenario. I feel like you could follow it to a very interesting progression. And you know, I'd love to hear what you would think about that. What if he went to the Academy and ultimately forgot what it was that he was there for and fighting for? You know, would he have ended up like Erica Quell and ultimately defected? You know, I don't know. I think it could have been easy for him to slip down the other path. And speaking of slipping down the other path, so... We have the comparison on, you know, the Rebel side with Luke Skywalker. On the Imperial side, there's a comparison to be drawn with Aiden Versio, who is the, 
you know, the defector from Inferno Squad who defected when Operation Cinder went into effect. And in her particular case, Vardos, her home planet, was one of the planets that was selected to go through Operation Cinder. And that, of course, is the operation that the Emperor ordered posthumously with all these weird robot sentinel droids to scour a bunch of random planets across the galaxy, not because of any particular strategic initiatives or anything like that, not for political, nothing, just a whole bunch of randomly selected planets just to cause havoc and chaos, basically. And Aiden Versio rebelled against it and fought against the implementation of Operation Cinder for Vardos. But Erica Quell, even though she initially says that she, you know, when she talks about her defection and tells the story that she tried to fight against the implementation of Operation Cinder on Necronus, the fact of the matter is, is that we get sort of a um, Ryan Johnson Last Jedi-ish situation where the initial story she tells is actually a lie, and it turns out that she did fully participate in the... Uh, the cleansing, if you will, according to the Emperor, of Necronus under Operation Cinder. However, it was just too much for her. And, you know, as much as she didn't want to go back to the Empire, she might well have done so. And it's ultimately Major Soren Keys who has recognized her quote-unquote sickness, as he describes it, and kicks her out of Shadow Wing. Says that, you know, you would stay here until the bitter end and just do it out of loyalty for your unit. Like, the thing that she glommed onto in her darkest moments, you know, wanting to be at least able to help the people that were around her on a day-to-day -day basis, that that would be the thing that would compel her on to see it all the way through until there was nothing left to do. And it's especially interesting that we find out that this is what the real story is with Erica Quell's defection to the Rebel Alliance, because earlier on in the novel, as she's watching new defectors come into Traitor's Remorse, the place where all of these defectors are being gathered up and debriefed and whatnot, she has some very unkind words for the defectors that come in day by day because of the fact that they have still stayed with the Empire, even as more and more atrocities have been committed. And she is, you know, in the beginning presents as though she's looking down on these people when, in fact, she's carrying around the shame of having done some of the very things that these people defecting late in the game are doing. So, yes, we have a rather morally complex character in Erica Quell, but one who seems to be trying to redeem herself. And, gosh... Isn't that the most interesting kind of character we could possibly hope for? I would personally say so. So I think that's a really good start to this trilogy and to, you know, building a series around a character. And um, I have a quick note that is unrelated to Alphabet Squadron that I want to share with you after the break. Just a note of gratitude. So stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact, the premier email marketing solution for small businesses and organizations. I've used their service since 2003, and over the past decade and a half, I've watched them evolve, make the product simpler, more powerful, easy to use, and do everything that they can to help train people to use the product more effectively and for it to work with other forms of marketing like social media, for example. So. Check out sw7x7.com slash email to learn more about Constant Contact and start a free trial. Once again, that is sw7x7.com slash email for a free trial. Welcome back. This is just a note of thanks to Andrew Lemire, who became the latest patron of Star Wars 7x7. And Andrew, I'm just so grateful for your support. Thank you very much. To all the patrons who support the show and who have supported the show over the years, Thank you so much for your support. We're coming up on five years here. I'm saying we have a habit of doing this. It's just me. It's just me. Every single day for the last five years, it'll be five years on Sunday, I've been doing this. And I'm so grateful to the support of the patrons who help make this possible on a daily basis. And if you would like to help make that possible too, I hope you'll consider going to patreon.com slash SW7X7 
and supporting me in delivering this daily dose of Star Wars joy to you and to thousands of people all around the world. Thank you for considering it. Once again, it's patreon.com slash SW7X7. And that is going to do it for today's show. Thank you so much for joining me for it. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademarks and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.